full disclosure, my little sister is in the room with me right now, so don't be surprised if you hear random sarcastic comments for coming from the other side of the room, so. <laughs> Welcome to 60 Minutes of Life Experience with me, Summer Sullivan, and my very voluminous hair today. I don't know what's going on with that, but it's the humidity. I'm visiting my family, and where we are, it's very humid, so this is what we got. Anyways, um, it's just me on today. It could be my little sister. She is in the same room as me, but she didn't feel like doing it today, so you're just stuck with me today. Okay, so I have a very special episode planned today, and here's a, a little background. I, I made a video on this once, but I think I ended up deleting it, so I'm going to quick recap of how I got the idea for my current book, is that I went through this folder on my computer called Summer's Writing Ideas, and it was basically a compilation of my old stories from when I was in like the 8th to 10th grade, I want to say. And I ended up finding a very basic idea for what is now the Fall to Darkness series in this folder. Um, maybe one day I'll pull it out and I can kind of show you like what it was. It, it was really only the idea of like the shadow as a thing. All the characters are different. Um, all the kingdoms are different. Like, But the shadow was the idea and I took that idea and I made Fall to Darkness. So what I decided would be fun is that that folder has a lot of stories in it and I thought I could pull some of them out and share them with you because some of them are some of them are very bad ideas and very stupid some of them actually have potential I feel like some of them are just I don't know I'll let you decide but um so what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna tell you each story what I was going for and then read you some um excerpts from them and you can decide, because I'm looking for a fun writing project to do on the side that I'm never going to publish to kind of be an escape from the writing I am publishing. So you can help me decide which one I'm going to take and, and make it like a fun project for me to continue on an idea I had when I was 14. So anyway, that's today's episode. Here we go. So I have compiled a list of them. There's going to be many parts to this because the folder of writing ideas is a huge folder. So I took um, three or four that I'm going to talk about today, and then if you want a part two, well, there's going to be a part two no matter what, but if you want me to, like, read or share these these stories in full, they're only a couple chapters each, but I will also do that. And remember, don't steal my ideas, because these are prime summer eighth grade ideas, so I'm warning you. Anyways, the first one I have is a story that I entitled Beastly. It's for, I wrote it in June of 2017, so I was 15, and I don't really remember what was going on this summer, but this is kind of a weird territory for me to be exploring. Basically, Beastly is this murder mystery I came up with, and let me just read you the first paragraph of it, and you can decide for yourself, so... Um, she sat at a booth in the bistro, sipping a cup of coffee and plotting away to avenge her boyfriend's death, which for her was a typical Saturday morning. Her booth, <laughs> her booth faced the window, and she watched each car pass, wondering if this killer was driving any of them. They had called it a cold case. He went missing and stayed missing for three months, and then t the two men who had come from downstate to hunt him stumbled across his decayed corpse in the woods ten miles from town. His dead body looked nothing like he did when he was alive, obviously, but the police had brought in his family to identify it, and they said it was him. Testing was done. The mortician did his thing. <laughs> It was a commonly known fact. Arian Wooden had been murdered. So that was the first paragraph. I think we're off, off to a great start. Um, basically, the main character's name in that is Leighton, which is a name I, I really like. But um, and she ends up invest. She teams up with this like hacker boy. And I was really obsessed with Heath Ledger in 2017. So in my mind, the hacker boy was Heath Ledger, and they solve this cold case um but anyway here are some here are some notable quotes from the the manuscript that i pulled <laughs> and one of the characters her best friend's name is juan like j-u-a-n so um for context of this next quote 
we will get to the bottom of this. Right now, I'm like freaking Sherlock Holmes with this case, and you're Dr. Juan Watson, am I right? That's, oh my god. Yeah, that was 15-year-old summer. Um, next week, no one will even remember the murder happened. They'll go back to their petty little lives. No one will care about avenging Gina, but I do. Gina may have been strange, but no one deserves to be murdered at 16. I'm going to find out who really killed her, Juan. Trust me. Sherlock no Holmes, Leighton said as she stood back up, eat your damned heart out. So that's not one I think I'm going to... Uh, continue uh, because I it's really cringy it's almost as cringy as my writing now am I right <laughs> so yeah that was beastly um I'm gonna have to come back and like match up what events in my life were going on to understand like why I was writing this but anyways so okay number two is uh, a story I wrote in 2018 so I was math is not my strong suit it was 16. That took way longer than it should have. Anyway, so it's called Crux, C-R-U-X, and basically it is a dystopian book, and I'm gonna read you the first paragraph, because I actually, this one I could see myself, like, coming back to and obviously, like, rewriting, but uh, it's, it's actually kind of a cool idea. In the high-tech world of Vashon's Academy for Advanced Teenagers, where young geniuses lived and computers were embedded in every room where it cost millions of dollars to go because of its prestige, Adelie Perry had just gotten so drunk that she projectile vomited all over the DJ's tech equipment. I like that tech equipment that has, what is tech equipment? But I wrote it. Um, so yeah, here's another... A paragraph from it. The party was celebrating George Washington's 500th birthday, but no one there was thinking about it. Most of them vaguely knew who, who he was. What they did know was that it was an excuse to get absolutely smashed and that they were going to take advantage of it. Um, I don't know what I was thinking in with this. Actually, I do. What the story was going to be about is that this girl lives in the society where basically, like, computers control everything. Basically... And Computers control everything. No one makes any decisions in this society. Kind of like if you ever read the book Matched, is that what it's called? Matched, where you don't make any of your own choices. And what was going to happen is that her ex-boyfriend is a, like an engineer who experience, experiments with like technology that allows people to go to different realms. So what was going to happen is that she was going to accidentally go into a realm where people do have like rights and they get to do what they want and eat what they want and be who they want. And basically she was going to realize like we should all be living this way and then go back to like the dystopian world and like have a rebellion. It's not a very original idea. I grant you that, but it was actually, I, I enjoyed like rereading it. It definitely, I, I don't know. It has potential. But um, here's another, like, excerpt from it that kind of sums it up. I dream of a world with no computers. I dream of the world before the war, before they started to control every part of us. I dream of a world where I can eat an entire tray of brownies without being punished for it. I dream of a world where I can choose when I eat and sleep, I, when I can go out as many times as I want. A world where I can be anything I want to be. A world where I'm not required to serve someone else. A world where there isn't the constant threat of disappearing because I didn't do what they say. I want to be free, as free as the birds that used to fly in the sky. I want to breathe in real oxygen from real trees, not clones. I want to go camping in a place that isn't temperature monitored and constantly under the watch of safety computers. I feel like I'm in a prison. That's my dream. They want to make your life perfect. What kind of person wouldn't want to serve them? Not me, Adley muttered to herself. Not me. Honestly? 16 year old summer, man. I'm just kidding. But I do, honestly, I feel like it could be a good, it could be good if it was totally ripped apart and rewritten and more original. But anyway, that was Crux. So this is another one that I would never, ever come, ever come back to. It was in 2017 and I was obsessed with a song in the year 2017 from the 80s called Endless Summer Nights by Richard Marks. <laughs> And I remember how you loved me. 
and I so the book is called and the summer nights and it was basically gonna be like a Nicholas Sparks-esque romance summer romance slash mystery but mostly romance because I wanted there to be a part where they like slow dance to end the summer nights but um here's some notable quotes from that his voice reminded me of a musical symphony my dad had taken me to in Chicago, all low and clear and sexy. Well, the symphony wasn't sexy, but his voice was. <laughs> I need to choose a new career. Okay, and I don't then, know what was going on. With me. I, one thing I wasn't to was Richard Mark's song and the Summer Nights, and that is this whole project was the result of that. So I blame Richard Marks, as I do with most things that go wrong in my life. Okay, so the final, I saved this one for last, even though there's, again, dozens more. So I could make probably five parts to this series. I think it's fun. If anything, it's just like nostalgic to see what I was writing at what age. And like I said, I'm sure I can go back and look at like my old diaries and match up whatever events were going on in my life to why I was writing certain things. Um, anyways, this one is from 2018 as well, and this one I saved for last because I definitely ha think it has the most potential to be reworked as something else. It's called Exploited. Basically, I was really into Pretty Little Liars at the time. I'm currently rewatching Pretty Little Liars, so I'm still into Pretty Little Liars. But anyways, this isn't about Pretty Little Liars, this is about Exploited, which was basically a book about this girl who met these two twins, a boy and a girl twin, who were super manipulative, and everyone hated them, but she was their friend, and, like, she was in, in with them, and basically what happens is that they disappear, and she's the main suspect, but she didn't do it, obviously, and a couple, like, six months after they disappear, she starts getting, like, letters from them that are, like, come find us so she basically goes on this cross-country like road trip being guided by who she thinks are the twins but might not be it's and a pretty little liars kind of same vibe as a is that they're being guided by the like the letters and and they're like running away and she has to come after them but she goes on the road trip with her ex-boyfriend so there's like romance and there's mystery and yeah so anyway i actually think this one has a lot of potential like i really like the idea of like the evil twins plot line and i remember like thinking of how the whole thing's gonna end and i actually think it actually has like potential why do i keep saying actually okay so i'm gonna read you a couple excerpts from this um this is so the two twins were named parker twins also there are a lot of f words in here bad 2018 summer included the the F word, how dare she? Everyone had beef with the Parker twins. It didn't matter if you were a student, a teacher, a member of the staff, or even the lunch lady. The Parkers had bleeped with your life in some way. It was what they did. Some people liked painting pictures, like my mom. Others loved to ski or to run. The Parker twins loved to bleep people up and watch the damage. It was as though they were in a soap opera starring themselves in which they played the mean girls, or the mean girl and guy in this case. Um, okay. Everyone wanted the Parker twins to be found. Every single person whose life they had bleeped up came to their prayer services, asking God for their safe return. All of them participated in the online search parties, plastering their beautiful faces over social media. We tweeted at celebrities, asking them to help us out in the search. We made demonstrations for them, marching down the streets with signs that's re that read, bring them back. We hated them. We loved them. They bleeped up our lives, but we couldn't live without them. Where were the Parker twins? He was gorgeous and hot and had a deep voice, but had many flaws that people didn't see behind that facade. He was like a broken stained glass window, beautiful but still broken. I remember writing that and just thinking it was the most deep, like, thing in the entire world. I was like, broken stained glass window, yes, like, that's so deep. I was like, I'm a broken stained glass window. But I actually, this one I highlighted not because it's funny, because I actually think just this, like, paragraph, I could incorporate this into other writing. I just thought it was, it was kind of a cool, maybe he said in his voice that was equally parts destructive as it was quiet and contemplative. Maybe if we were two different people in a different time in a different place, we would work out, Marlo. And also, okay, so this is the last little piece of, like paragraph and the funny thing about this is that 
I this what I'm about to read is about breaking up with someone and at the time I wrote this I had never like broken up with anyone before um and obviously at this time I've had breakups in between 2018 and now and what's weird is that like actually what I'm typing about breaking up I think there's a lot of truth to it which is weird because I had never broken up with someone before but now that I have I'm like this is kind of spot on so claps to you 2018 summer there were a lot of terrible things about breaking up with someone. The pain you felt at the knowledge that this person was no longer your person, the physical longingness for their lips against yours, their fingers weaved with yours, the empty way your Friday nights felt. But the worst part for me were the facts. Somehow I couldn't forget that Jules told everyone his favorite band was Van Halen when really it was Millie Vanilli and that he was too embarrassed to tell them the truth. I couldn't forget that he liked his fries to be drizzled with ketchup and then dipped in mustard. He loved to swim, but he hated the beach because unlike most people, the feeling of sand between his toes was bothersome. He secretly, but not so secretly, watched Sister Wives reruns as much as he possibly could. The worst part was trying to forget. I just thought that was like, that was spot on because that was something I have always had a hard time with. Is I have all these random facts about this one person in my head what do I do with this information now that we're to not together anymore? Like, I'm not going to have Jeopardy on my ex-boyfriend, but, you know, I I just thought that was kind of cool how I had written that not having been in a relationship, but can kind of look back and be like, that was, that was right. Like, I experienced that kind of confusion about what do I do with all this stuff in my head. Um, anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy. I kind of, um, kind of threw this together last minute. But if you want me to like share any of those actual like manuscripts completely unedited, I I would love yeah, to. Yeah, so um, check out my books, my actual books on faultodarkness.com, follow my socials, yada yada yada, and have a good week everyone. Bye! <laughs>